song. Yes. Amen. That message. Wonderful time in Sunday school study and the matter of the church and the unity, the things that really truly bind us together beyond Amen. a lot of things that divide people. That's right. There are things that God has given to his people that pull us all together. <clears throat> Let's have a word of prayer again. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship, be together like this, study the Word of God, share testimonies, sing songs, make prayers, fellowship together. We consider these great blessings. And your presence among us, your kneeling and your help, Lord, we covet, we want more of. We need that help today of your Spirit. So in all things we give thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glad to see Bill Edwards here with us this morning. Amen. He's kind of one of those that you call living legends. <laughs> People will talk about him. If the Lord gives us days and years and uh, decades ahead, uh, people will talk about Bill Edwards. Because he's done so much. He just did it. There are many times when circumstances demanded, demanded uh, an extra help, an extra hand, an extra encouragement, an extra driver, an extra joke teller, yeah. <laughs> an extra a lot of things. Uh, Brother Bill served well. And so it's uh, real uh, special to have Bill visiting with us all here today. And Dorothy, we missed and Dorothy her yeah, you guys that didn't know Dorothy, you really missed uh, something. That's right. I'm sure most of you knew her, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were in their home and stayed there and in their home many times. Mm -hmm. Ate at their table, drank their coffee, and Bill could drink lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we drank lots of coffee over the years. But uh, I thank the Lord for Bill and Dorothy Edwards. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to uh, give recognition. And praise and thanks to Bill yes. for all he's done and meant to all of us. Amen. 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 Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Love you. Yes. Brother Ken. Yes. One funny note about Sister Dorothy. Yeah. Our kids remember the most probably about her, and that is she always said it didn't matter how full you were. There was always room for ice cream because it went down through the cracks. Experiences, 
positive and negative uh, for you. But it's still a question, are you accepted? And in God's kingdom, we've been discussing this, this matter in the kingdom of God and the faith and uh, the holiness lessons that we talked about. And uh, when you talk about uh, the things of God, being holy and being forgiven and being filled with the Spirit, it has a way of dividing up the haves and the have-nots. Yeah. The do's and the don'ts. The holy and the almost holy. The ones that look good and the ones that almost look good. Mm -hmm. On and on and on. The faith can really divide us up if we let it. Mm -hmm. We don't understand the dynamics that pull this whole thing together. But it's, it always leaves us with the question, am I accepted? I've preached in a lot of uh, churches of our persuasion across the country. And uh, all that varying levels of uh, observance and belief in the faith as we teach it and preach it and endeavor to live it. Just every level. And then uh, most of the time you kind of fall in a happy medium on the issues. And those are nice to be in. Every now and then you get into a real radical sect of our persuasion. Really, is really staunch on a lot of things. And uh, then uh, in there, it's not quite as comfortable, especially if you're at this level and they're pushing for this level of observance. If you're down here, uh, what they want, it's, uh, it's not a real nice feeling. And then there's another level too that uh, anything goes type of atmosphere, then you think, well, my word, is anybody going to make it? I don't know, where do you fall in there? Am I accepted? A lot of times, I wasn't accepted there either. Not accepted there, not accepted there. Where am I accepted? Well, you better get it figured out that you're accepted by God at the level of learning, knowledge, understanding, and capability that you have and are, and at whatever level it is that the Lord receives you, accepts you, and loves you, strengthens you, encourages you, puts you out into the world that you live in for effectiveness, you better accept that and you better find acceptance That's right. somewhere. Now, a lot of my holiness counterparts, you know, they would, uh, they would find fault with how I'm teaching you here. Because what they want is they want a dead-on observance at one particular certain level of everything. Well, when you find it, and it's perfect, you come tell me, and I'll go check it out. <laughs> Okay, you just kind of keep that in mind, back of your head there. I found that if you ever run into something like that, I found it, I found it. You come tell me, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll say, happy hunting. <laughs> go get him. I'll say, go get him, Tiger. I'm staying with my group here as long as the Lord wants me to. Because this is where God wants me for now. That's right. Praise the Lord. So we'll do the best we can for each other. Amen. Amen. I can't, you know, so I can't be me without you. Did you know that? You say, well, you're you anywhere, huh? I'm me here because of you. That's right. That's true. I need you. We need each other in God's kingdom. Yes, man. For God will really help us like he wants to. Us, here, we need each other. Therefore, that matter, am I accepted? It's a big deal to me. When I feel accepted, I'm on top of the world. That's right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, are you accepted? Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5, verse 9. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or or absent, we may be accepted of Him. There is the standard that governs all our other acceptabilities. Right. 
situations. Am I accepted of him? That's the issue. Whether here or whether there, am I accepted of him? So, that's the kind of the idea there we want to consider. That I may be accepted by him. And this is why I try and keep on trying. This is why I keep on working at it, working at it, and picking away. And picking away. This is how it up. I teach you, if you mess it up, don't quit. Brendan, don't quit. If you foul it up, Sharon, don't quit. Don't quit. Darla, Jen, Becky, don't quit. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't started on them yet. <laughs> Don't quit. That's how come Paul's still sitting here. He's not sitting here because he never messed up along the way. Did you know that? I'm not standing here because I haven't messed up along the way. James isn't sitting here. Because he has not messed up at all along the way. That's Becky. She won't tell you. That's right. Janice, still sitting here, but not because she hasn't messed up somewhere along the way. You say, well, how can you call yourselves holiness? Because we are working for something more than just acceptance here. We are working to be accepted by Him. Amen. Yes. And we're dedicated to that. And so we keep getting back up, dusting ourselves off, making adjustments, and moving on. Amen. That's why we're still here. Now, in some of our other holiness counterparts, they would make great disagreement with what I'm teaching you here. Because they're preaching a perfection level. <coughs> In a without fail demand that nobody can do. Right? <clears throat> nobody. Man, if Moses couldn't keep on track with all the power and might and glory, and if Paul couldn't keep on track with all the power and glory, and Joshua couldn't keep on track. Peter couldn't keep on track with all he could do, then how do you expect to perfectly live out a life for him? How, how do you expect to do that? But you can get a set of goal and determination that you'll still be around to tell the story about how you moved up in grace, you moved up in love, you moved up in all things of God. Because you made a relational decision. I want to be accepted by Him. I want to be accepted by the Savior. I want the Savior to accept me. What do I have to do? There you go. It's a set thing. Acceptance by the master. Once you start to understand this and really put that into your determination bank, of, you'll start doing things for different reasons. <coughs> doing things for God and doing things for people isn't always exactly the same thing to the same degree. No. There's a lot of things I do for people I don't really want to do sometimes. You say, oh, I'm not going to ask you to help me again. No, you won't ever know. If I don't feel bad, if I don't feel good one day, and you really need help, you won't know I don't feel good because I'll be there for you. You see, a lot of times my wife and I don't feel good when we help each other. Say that she more than one miserable day or night, she's got up and said, "I fixed you something." Oh man, you didn't need to do that. Why are you doing it? For the acceptance of a certain one. Acceptance. 
This is why we do some of these things. Though. Are you serving the Lord to be accepted by Him? Or are you serving the Lord to be accepted by a certain level of believer? Or the amount of money you're giving. Or the amount of attention. Or maybe, since we're in the new modern days now, for the amount of air time you get. Whoa. How rich could I get speaking for air time? What do you think? <laughs> Television preachers making big money. Is that a joke or what? Why, why do you do what you do? Why are you testifying? Why are you worshiping? Why are you proclaiming a testimony of any kind for God? Is it for everybody listening or watching? Or is it to be accepted by Him? Am I accepted by Him? That's what you've got to face when you go home and you're by yourself or you're riding down the highway and thinking on the issues of faith and God is there talking. Now you're one-on-one -on -one, and now how do you stand? How do you stack up? Are stuff troubling you? Is there things troubling you? Attitudes that's troubling you? That's the time we begin to really answer the question, no. am I accepted at all? Is the Lord pleased with me? Well, that's all. Only you can answer that. Only you can answer that. That I may be accepted by Him? For me, this is why I keep trying. This is why I keep trying. And, and maybe I'm the only one like this. But if I didn't, if I didn't do what I've been teaching you, I've been gone. Within the first five years of Christian uh, experience, I've been gone already. No, not five years. The first year I've been gone. I ditched it way back then. I had plenty of reasons to ditch it. Yeah. It would have been all over with, Sharon. You'd have never known me. Is that good or bad? That's sad. She says, well, thank you. I love you, too. <laughs> Amen. No, it would have been over. Bill, how many times did you have to make corrections along the way? You've been at this a long time. Quite a few times. And if he says quite a few times, you know he means a lot of times. Had to make corrections. Clint, ever had to make any corrections? He's shaking his head, yes. Don't ask him how many. He's probably forgotten how many he had to make. James, ever had to make corrections? Yes. Yes. Joe, Josh, Bill, Paul, Bill, Lee, Cliff. He's thinking about it. James, <laughs> we have. And if, if we're, uh, us men have difficulty nodding our heads, well, that's all right. All of us men, you know, are proud. Not in a bad sense, but in a leadership sense. In a leadership sense. But I have to say, I've had to make a lot of corrections. Adjustments, is that what we've been calling them? Pick yourself up, get back up, dust yourself off, make adjustments. What kind of adjustments? Well, some of the more common ones is, I'm sorry, I opened my mouth too fast and again. Again. You say, well, shouldn't you learn after 50 times? I know I should. <clears throat> if I don't learn after 50 times, you know, you think, man, you're hopeless. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I am. Maybe I should learn quicker. I better, if I am striving to be accepted by him, I better learn, I better set my heels in somewhere and learn if I'm striving to be accepted by Him. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so this is why we keep trying and keep on trying that I may be accepted by Him. The real issues and struggles in this life are spiritual and eternal. The real struggles, the real battles, the, the real critical issues 
are spiritual and eternal. All the other issues, they fall kind of in line in an order of importance along the way. But underneath it all is spiritual, eternal, heaven and hell, God or Satan. Those are the real issues. We see a lot of problems in society all around us. So, and uh, we think this should happen, this should happen, this should happen. Underneath it all is a spiritual warfare going on. A spiritual warfare going on, and that's what's going on. It's something of eternal significance, of spiritual significance underneath it all. A lot of people are unable to put together the greatness of a country and the solidness of faith in God, the Creator. Somehow, society's forgotten that the greatness of a country doesn't just happen by itself. It's based on good people who have principles, who understand the origin of life and the meaning of it all. From that base comes greatness. Not from other shallower issues and movements and people and inventions and on and on and on. Greatness in a nation comes because of basic principle, God, eternal, spiritual dynamic. That's right. And people that embrace that, those principles, are the ones that become those who spawn goodness in a land. When there's no more greatness, it's because the real meaning of it all has been lost somewhere. Yes. Those are the real issues. The real issues in our country, the real issues in our world are spiritual and eternal. Outside of the plan of God for men, human beings, life will not make any sense at all. Get outside of God, the origin, with a purpose, and get another concept of origin existence. What do you get? Well, ever since I've been in school, uh, they were teaching man and monkey. Schools were, you know, some of the, a lot of schools were just kind of, oh, this is how we came. And let's go. <laughs> One day we said, please and thank you, and how are you? And I'll fix that for you. You can buy that if you want. You can buy that idea. If you're not going to go with God, that's the idea you're going to have to go with. So how can that be? You, you answer that. That's what you want. You don't want God. If you don't want goodness. That's the plan you get. Well, there's a few other crazy things out there that you can glue to too. Concepts of origin. You can go that way if you want. You're still going to have to answer some basic things, though. I like what James says. When you can answer what holds the atom together. <laughs> when you can answer. Physical, emotional, spiritual, all pulled together in one being that's the master of the planet. Figure that out. If that came from, <laughs> we're in big trouble. But thanks be to God. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. All things were made by Him. Praise the Lord. Outside the plan of God for human beings and man, life will not make any sense at all. A supreme, absolute deity with a definite plan for the supreme, dynamic creation, man. We have origin, we have purpose, we have meaning, and we have destiny. Amen. Praise the Lord. That just answers all the issues. That just answers all the questions. That just sets it all in place. Origin, concept of origin. Supreme, absolute deity with a design and a plan. Spoken into existence. Origin. A supreme, absolute deity with a definite plan will bring forth a supreme, dynamic creation man and give him a concept of origin that you can stand on that, believe in that, and as time has gone by, the uh, dynamics of study, learning, intelligence, finds out more and more truth 
about the concept of origin from supreme absolute deity. Even though many circles won't admit it. They won't admit it, but it is so. Praise the Lord. Origin answers the question of purpose. Purpose. And God made man in his image. Why did he make him in his image? So he could fellowship with another being with many divine capabilities, with relational dynamics that can give back when given to. God created mankind with a sense of purpose so that you can give back. What's the sense of a marriage if it's just a one way, we just look one way, we don't talk to each other, we don't do things for each other, we don't try to understand why it's just one way, you do your thing, I'll do mine. That's no marriage. If, you, if you're headed that direction, you better stop and get a grip and figure it out what's really in all this business. Purpose. But God's been made man with a purpose. A relational purpose. A relational existence. We mean nothing in this world unless there's another being like us somewhere nearby. Don't think you're going to go hide out in the mountains all by yourself and you and God and you're going to have sweet fellowship till the Lord comes and takes you home. You're so messed up, you don't even know how bad off you are. You need other beings like yourself to give you a sense of meaning. To fill in the gaps of knowledge and understanding. To give you acceptance. To love you. Care for you. Listen to you. Listen to your sorry jokes. Laugh at your good jokes. Don't chip over your table and have biscuits and gravy and strong coffee. Roast wieners over the fire. Eat charcoal burgers together, together, playing ball, fishing and hunting. You know, hunting has just been such a tremendous experience. I've done a lot of hunting by myself. Enjoy it just being in the woods. But the reason I enjoy it by myself is because it only lasts for a few hours and then I head home. Oh, I'm back. That's, that's the whole reason. I'll come back to that every time. I'll come back to people every time. I'll come back to people every time. The dynamic of human nature. I'm nothing and nobody without other people. I am nothing and nobody and I have nothing without other people. God's a relational God. The purpose He gives us is a relational purpose. You and me and we and others all around us. Draw them in. Get a grip on them. Get them close. Give them a sense of meaning and purpose like God gave you. But He answers the questions of meaning. 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 What does it mean? What does that mean? A lot of times I'll follow up with a question... Someone gives me instructions. If it's something of a relational or subjective nature, I'll ask, what does that mean? Because I can't, I, I don't always uh, interpret words for what they mean. Words don't mean the same anymore as what they used to. They change. I don't know. Menu always to me meant hot dogs and cornflakes and eggs and bacon. That's what menu has always meant to me. Does menu mean that today? Uh -huh. If you're looking at a screen, menu means something different. Lots and lots of words have changed. I have to ask, what does that mean? What does that mean? You may have to answer that question when you tell people about Jesus being saved, being sanctified, being born again, Someone's going to say, huh? So you're going to have to say, here's what it means. It means that the supreme deity, God, made a plan of salvation in the sacrifice of his son to atone for the sinful condition of all created humanity by a blood sacrifice that God, the creator, accepts. And if you will accept that sacrifice for yourself, 
God will forgive you of your against God condition and receive you and change you and make you one of his own. And then you'll go on to be with him and others like him and others like yourself forever. That's what it means. Meaning, praise the Lord. If I had to do it all by myself, I think I'd get miserable being by myself and just my dog and my pet bird and my turtle. And if that's all there was, I'd, I'd be miserable. But it's not. God gave us meaning by giving us one another. Meaning and purpose are in one another, you and I. It's a relational, it's a relational theme meaning in God. Am I accepted? Am I accepted? Are you accepted? Do you feel accepted? Do you feel accepted? You say, well, I bought that much. Okay, great. That's that much. We can work with that much. Let's increase it. But then, a supreme, absolute de deity with a definite plan will give us also destiny. Destiny. People who talk about going to heaven, a lot of times you think, oh man, that's a real idealistic dreamer. <clears throat> heaven? What is it? What is it? Where is it? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I can't answer you exactly on that, but I do know this. If it means being somewhere near the one who brought a change in my own heart and life and gave me the strength and the courage and the health to go on with life and gave me other good people to fellowship with and drink coffee with and tell jokes and listen to jokes with and travel with and go places and see things and do things and hear things. If that's what it means, that's, that's for me. That's for me. You know something? That might be what you're looking for. That might be what you're looking for. Well, destiny. What does that mean? Uh, what do you mean eternal in that? Well, all this that I said we like to do and have fun doing. What if it was eternal? What if it was eternal? You said, well, I don't, I don't know if I could eat hamburgers forever. Well, I don't know what eternal is like. We'll have a new body. It may not be dependent on hamburgers. The new body might not even like coffee. Bill, that'd be sad. That'd really be sad. But I'll accept it. I'll float with it. I don't know what it means entirely, friends. I just know that destiny, if it's with God and by God, is going to be a good thing for whatever it is we are and for whatever we do. If it means singing, then we're going to have fun doing it. If it means shouting, we're going to enjoy it. If it means being together, we're going to have a great time. Praise the Lord. I don't know perfectly what it means, but if it means anything relational, I have a little understanding because of what goes on here with God's people and our friends and family. Praise God. There's destiny. And don't give us a supreme being created that. To me. With all that in mind and accepting the truth, it's the smartest idea in this life to be accepted by this Creator. <clears throat> and so we go back to our scripture. Wherefore we labor, we fight for, we work for, we struggle for, whether we're here or there, that we may be accepted of Him. Praise the Lord. So, when I make visits to Nevada, and I go there off and on, that's where I came from. That's the place I left because life wasn't going very good for me and I wasn't doing very good at all. I was being pretty mean and nasty and ugly and no good. So, does it mean then that uh, when I leave here and go visit Nevada, I pick up my old habits and go around look for my old buddies, you know, and we go hang out? And... <laughs> doesn't mean that at all. Whether I'm here or there, what I do here is what I do there. My folks can't get up and go out and go to church anymore. Rarely do they get to go to church. But when we go there, we give them church at home. When my children are with us, when they uh, children are there on a visit, they sing for them. They dig out the guitars and they sing for all oh, mom and dad love it. They do love it. Whether here or whether there, 
we strive to be accepted by Him. That's right. And sometimes we preach and teach Dad and Mom, say to them, once in a while we'll uh, say, you feel up to it? We'll, uh, we'll go up to the little oldest church up here, Bible Missionary Church in Fallon. They said, well, if you feel up to it, we'll take you up there for the evening service. Sometimes they'll say, yeah, okay, so we take our time. Help Mom get up in the truck and Dad chit-chat on the way. Whether here or whether there, we strive to be accepted by Him. To edify and teach and preach. Sometimes my brothers, and they're thinking pretty seriously sometimes, a lot of times. Both my brothers are good thinkers. And, uh, they, they may be crazy at times because they're smart, but they're both very good thinkers. And my sisters. And they think about the issues of life and eternal. And so I enjoy talking with them when they want to talk. Or whatever. Whether here or whether there. Whether absent from here and present there or whether present here and absent there. We strive to be accepted by Him. Amen. Help us, Lord. Does that give us any sense of direction it needs to? Praise the Lord, the masterful creator. <clears throat> it's the smartest idea in this life to be accepted by the creator. Yes. What do I have to do to be accepted? What do I have to do to be accepted? What do you have to do to be accepted by the Lord? Well, what did he tell the disciples? Anybody? Anybody. What did he say to the disciples before they were disciples? couple of simple words. That's it. A for the day. Gene said it. He just says, according to our scripture, follow me. Follow me. Well, that would have been really nice and easy. I had my wife just kind of saw me and I says, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> she jumped on board and it was just uh, heaven all the way. <laughs> But it wasn't that way. I didn't have that kind of magic. But the Savior does. Yes, that's right. The Savior's got that kind of magic, that kind of power, mm -hmm. that kind of personhood, that kind of goodness, that kind of winning way, that kind of love, that kind of strength, that kind of comfort. And he says, follow me. Follow me. I'll take you there. Amen. Drew, when you were in the cave, were you guys in there by yourselves or did you have a guide? We had a guide. Hey! <laughs> there we go. Did they get you way down in there and shut the lights off? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Trust me, it's dark. 900 feet underground and they cut the lights. Well, actually, it was in a mountain and the mountain was 900 feet. Okay. That's why said we were 900 okay, feet. Okay, good. All right, I got you. Anyway, they were way down in there with no lights, and it's dark. We, we did have the lights on sometimes. Sometimes, okay. We did turn them on. Yeah. We turn them off. Sometimes. Okay, but that's because you had a guy. A guy! A guy! Jesus says, follow me, I'll take you there. Follow me, I'll take you there. Get on board, I'll take you there. What? You want to go to heaven? Follow me, I'll take you there. I'll take you there. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. I will give you a relational context to live the rest of your life in. And you'll draw others to me just like you were drawn to me. Others will follow. I'll give you a meaning. I'll give you purpose. I'll guide you. Praise the Lord. That's what I have to do to be accepted. With that attitude, that inner set, determined, God can work with you. That attitude, God can work with you. I'll follow him. Yeah, I'll follow you. I can work with somebody like that. And ever since I started to catch on, that's kind of how I strove to, to kind of be. There's even been lots of times, few times, that I knew more than the guy that was uh, over me. But I didn't let him know it. Why is that? Because he was the official guy, that's why. I had a couple of bosses. They didn't have as much life experience 
let alone grace experience or other situations. I didn't let on. I didn't let on. I let them be the leader, do the directing. But at the times when I had to take charge for issues, for circumstances, and they says, okay, you take over and take care of this. It's okay, follow me. Follow me. That's simple, you guys. Man, finding God isn't that complicated. It's a relational context with relational dynamics and with beautiful outcomes. Nothing better than love and care and happiness of another human being. Is there? You say, heaven, heaven. Well, you got to get there to figure that one out. God can work with you, reveal truth to you, reveal truth through you. Do you live to be accepted by the Savior? Praise the Lord. Well, let's go home and think about that and work on it. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, thank you for this day together, this time together. The Word of God that gives us guidance, direction, truth, and knowledge, and empowers us to become more like you, to learn more and more, to be a lead, a guide, a help, a care, and love to others. We thank you for the truth. So in all things we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.